Hello, a warm welcome to all from SGT University. I am Nikita Sethi, Faculty of Allied Health Sciences. Today, we will be learning about working, prerequisites and procedure of retinoscopy. The working of retinoscope can be understood in stages. The stages involved during retinoscopy are illumination stage, reflex stage and projection stage. In illumination stage, retina is illuminated. The retinoscope projects a beam of light into the patient's eye through the pupil. In reflex stage, Illuminated area of fundus acts as an object and forms its image at the far point of the eye. The light reflected back through the patient's pupil is called retinoscopic reflex or ret reflex. We have already discussed the position of far point in different refractive errors in our previous lecture. Last is projection stage in which the examiner see the reflex through the peephole of the retinoscope and observe its characteristics which help in deciding the type of refractive error. It is necessary to be well equipped to determine refractive error during retinoscopy. The prerequisites of retinoscopy are as follows. A semi-dark room, a trial set, a trial frame which is adjustable for children as well as adults. Distance vision charts, near vision charts, and the most important, the retinoscope. Now let's discuss the points to be remembered by the practitioner as well as for patient preparation. Before starting retinoscopy, you should know about examiner's position and handling of retinoscope while doing retinoscopy. First, we will discuss about examiner's position. The points that you should remember regarding position of examiner before starting the procedure are, firstly, set the level of examination stool so that the eye level of the patient and examiner is exactly same. Second, decide working distance as per the convenience of the examiner between 100 cm to 50 cm distance. Third, the examiner should sit in front of the patient in such a way so that the examiner's head do not obstruct the patient's view of target and instruct the patient that even if during the procedure at any point the examiner obstructs the target, the patient should inform the same. Points regarding retinoscope handling to be remembered are start with one-handed method that is, hold the retinoscope with one hand only, which will be convenient and efficient so that other hand is free to change trial lenses. Examiner's right hand and right eye are used to examine patient's right eye and left hand and left eye to examine patient's left eye. This was all for the practitioner setting. Now instructions for the patient. Explain the test to patient before starting that I am going to shine a light in your eye and get an indication of the power of the glasses you may need. Please keep both of your eyes open. Look at the target and let me know if my head blocks your view. Don't worry if the target is blurred. You can blink whenever you need to. Let's begin with the procedure. Sit at the working distance, for example 67 cm from the patient. Make a note if cycloplegic like atropine etc. is used. Set the patient's distance PD in the trial frame. Dim the room lights which provides dilated pupil. High contrast, brighter view of the pupillary reflex. Then ask the patient to look at a distance target and the target chosen for the patient to observe must be large or larger than 6 by 60 and that too should be a single object or letter which limits the eye movements rather than a row of letters or a spot of light is as good as anything else. Then position the streak of retinoscope at patient's pupil 
and sweep it across the patient's pupil and observe the characteristics of reflex seen change the orientation of streak from vertical to horizontal sweep again and observe the characteristics of reflex repeat for other meridians too if you observe same type and amount of movement in all meridians it indicates spherical hemotropia and if you observe different types and amount of movement in different meridians this indicates presence of astigmatism there are two types of mirror or beam settings in which reflex can be observed which are plane mirror and concave mirror plane mirror emits slightly diverging uncrossed light rays it is most commonly used effect for determining refractive power under normal condition this effect can be achieved in sleeve down position concave mirror emits convergent light rays this effect is useful for determining high degree of amyotropia and refractive error under hazy media such as cataract this effect can be achieved in sleeve up position so this was all about today's lecture today we covered working prerequisites and procedure of retinoscopy and in our next lecture we will study about characteristics of reflex seen during retinoscopy till then keep learning keep growing see you next time